three, two, and one. We are live. Yes, we are. And you know who's here too. For Sip and Shop Season 2, Episode 9. And I'm feeling fine. Oh, stop! Guess who's here? The Awaits. What's up, Andrea? <laughs> What's up, Eddie? <laughs> the Voice. And also, my four eyed glasses. It's happening. Mm hmm. You know what that means. Sometimes the eye, the eyes are in and out. <laughs> up, eyes up and down, in and out. <laughs> but we're here, and I'm so glad you're here, family. I am your host, Andrea Fair with a Bailey. As if you didn't already know. I'm not taking anything for granted, though, because we might have new viewers. Hopefully, we do. And hopefully, we have you coming on back every single week. Yes. Irene Bain watching. Who's watching? Irene Bain. Irene! Oh, my sister. Irene is my sister from Emmanuel Baptist Church, the church where Eddie and I reconnected, got married, and that's my sister. And every now and then I'm blessed to see her in the streets of Brooklyn. Hi, Irene. Good morning, my baby. Um, so everyone, let's start the show as we always do. And get your libations, please. Get them, whatever it is. Mm, in beauty and peace today. I'm calling it. I'm calling it in New York, everything that's going down out here. But whatever it is, the libation that you choose, we're hoping in your cup, glass, mug, mm -hmm. flute, solo cup, whatever it is. Flask. Fl flask. Even in a flask, that it is something healthy for your temple, that you honor your temple. So salute to you and us, all of us. Oh, my lipstick mark. Oh, this is so good. Okay. <sighs> this libation today is a concoction that the voice brewed. And the voice will now take over to tell you what it is as I sip. All right, so today we have... Uh coffee by Lavazza. It's an Italian coffee. And so what I did was I mixed up Lavazza Italian coffee uh, with something from David's Tea called Blueberry Jam, which is basically just dried up blueberries and it gives you that blueberry flavor when you put it in the, uh, the coffee maker with the coffee. So it's like having blueberry coffee. You know what I mean? I put a little monk fruit, a sugar substitute in it. And what, what, what was it? A caramel creamer? It's not really cream, but no, it's like... It's a coconut-based cream or right. called leaner creamer from Vitacost. Remember, we put you all up on Vitacost a while ago. Right. They have great uh, discounts constantly. Right. But also, you can get your monk fruit from there as well. And it's all, I think, great for those on a budget. Because you know, I, I like to ball, but I am frugal with the dollars. Right. So it's good. It makes a good blend. It's like a blueberry coffee. And it's, let me tell you. Homemade. It smells so good. And when he figured it out, how did you figure it out? I don't know. I just thought about it. I just saw the blueberry there and I said, you know what? This will go good in the coffee machine. <laughs> and, and there it is. <laughs> but babe, tell them like you put the coffee in so the, put, the filter. The filter then. Right. So we got the old school joint where you put the, the coffee ground up beans in the, uh, what do you call that thing? In the coffee maker. In the filter cup. In the filter. In the filter cup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I put the, uh, sometimes, well, today I put the uh, the blueberry jam, which is dried blueberry, in first, and I put the coffee over it. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I go the other way. I do the coffee first. I do that sometimes, And then too. I put the, the, it's the loose tea leaves is right. what he's speaking of. But it. But in the flavor of blueberry jam from exactly. Davis Tea. That's what it is. But it comes out the same. That's what Does I noticed. It? it comes out the exact same, yeah. So I yeah, but that. I always like yours better. I have to be honest. I, 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 that's because, you know what? Because that's that's because I use a lot of coffee. You do? Yeah, I use more coffee than you. 
So with the coffee, it's a little stronger. Oh. That's what it is. Mm. Well, whatever it is, this twin is banging. <laughs> and it's in, of course, the Beauty and Peace mug, which is a great way to wake up for your day if you, mm -hmm. you know, doing your um, working from home, of course, or if you're back in the office. It's just a great mantra to start your day. It is the mantra that started Fair Weather Faces. I, if you know the story, I was pushed to create a mantra. I didn't even have a clue like what it would be, but I was pushed by my other business partner, Ina Dillard, when we were in our early 20s to think of something that would represent the spirit of fair weather faces and this is it it's always been in beauty and peace that is the manner in which we serve you and in the manner in which we always aspire to be mm -hmm. so of course you can get your mug fairweatherfaces.com it's right there at andrea's seasonal picks mm, i got it that, mm. <laughs> it's not wrong with it yeah, but it's not good for the vocal cords. I'm not like a singer. But if I was, I would get red. Mm. Yeah. Let's have some fun, y'all. Who's out there? Oh, Joseph Cooper, my brother. How are you? Joe Coop. Okay. <laughs> As I put on my... You can get these from Peepers. It's center stage. I am a 2.5 reader. Whatever. I'm glad I can still read. How about that? Okay, so. What are you watching? May I make a suggestion? Thank you, I will. <laughs> Hacks! <laughs> Oh, yes, don't sleep on the mature, talent, talented actresses, actors. Don't sleep. Hacks on HBO Max. Gene Smart mm -hmm. leading the cast as a stand up comedian. The synopsis quickly is she's a stand up comedian. That, dried up stand-up comedian. Right. Dried up stand-up comedian. Still got has a mouth on her. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to that point when you get... It has a residency in Vegas. Mm -hmm. You get jaded in your career. Mm -hmm. You keep hit, hitting those pinnacles. And then now you're in a state of maintenance. Mm -hmm. and But you need to stay creative and you need to stay relevant. And that's where she is. And then she then meets up with a younger writer and then mm -hmm. they become a team and right. it goes from there and they come like a sledgehammer from the first episode yeah and jean smart if you all know um was an actress that was big in the 80s i think the show was yeah um designing women which i loved designing women i thought it was um you know it was a southern bell um design firm Really great acting in it, um, but I slept on her from back then because I was thinking that, mm -hmm. you know, because aesthetically, you know, Jean Smart back then was like really, you know, vivacious looking and still like, you know, like that uh -oh. kind of breezy Southern Belle look. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that possibly wasn't even her. It possibly was that, you know, we were just seeing, you know, one of the the aspects of her versatility. Right. Well, what is fabulous right now, and I was telling Eddie, this finally hit me the other day. We mentioned to you in a couple of episodes back for Sip and Shop, um, Mayor of East, East Town. Of East Town. Yeah. And Jean Smart plays the mother in for Mayor of East Town and Mayor... That's her? Yes, Okay, Yo, hold I up. didn't even know that. Are you for real? No, I'm saying, I don't know. I don't know about no designing women. Babe, I've been saying that. So you didn't make the connection. I didn't know that was Jean Smart. Okay, wow. All right, yes. Okay, so they uglied her up for playing the mom. It's very dowdy mm -hmm. in Mayor of East Town, but with this, again, smarty uh -huh. personality, is the same actress. 
It hit me the other day, a few days ago, as I was writing Sip and Shop, the bones of the show for you. Mm. When it got to that we would definitely talk about hacks, I was like, you know what? It's so fabulous right now. Is seeing that even as an artist, and I believe this transcends for any industry, Mm -hmm. if you love what you're doing, you have to hold on. Especially in the fickle entertainment industry. Jean Smart, I don't remember seeing her really in a lot of other roles since designing women was like the big thing. Then that show went off, and I think it went definitely went into syndication, so that's good for them. But um, one of my homegirls, my my good girlfriend's Val, who is a big makeup artist, a celebrity makeup artist at GMA, was telling me that, oh, no, hon, you have to watch her in Fargo. And I said, for real? She was like, oh, you got to watch her in Fargo. Not the movie Fargo, but the, the episodic Fargo. So I haven't gotten there yet. So I'll get there. And she said she plays like this mobster that's really scary. Yeah. The yeah. movie was phenomenal. But it's not the movie version. It's the um the episodic version. She was like, girl, when Gene Smart's character comes on, it is scary. Okay, so then now she's at the same time if in Mayor of Easton, right? Playing the mom, Dowdy. And then this kind of like older once was you could tell in her heyday was like glamorous and sexy and all these things in hacks and you just have to hold on because you never know when your time would she have ever thought that she would be a lead definitely have her own show again which is hacks but then be a lead character in mayor of easton both at the same time diverse roles with great actors around her? I don't think so. You know, sometimes when you're on your faith walk, you're moving by faith. It's not by sight, by what it looks like, but it's the vision that's in your head. And clearly she still had to have had a desire to act because she held on. So Jean Smart, thank you, my sister, for holding on and being a symbol that if you want it, you hold on because you don't know how it's going to be delivered to you. And damn it, she is doing it. She's doing it. So I have to check out Fargo. Um, like my homegirl Val encouraged me to do watch Fargo to see the other character that she played in that episodic. But and then Eddie just made the discovery, didn't even realize she was the mother and Mary. Oh, no, she looks totally different. Looks totally different. The power totally of, different. The power of makeup well, and hair. The makeup you, and hair department. But you know who just showed her some love? Kendall just showed her some love. She did! And yeah. it's Kendall's birthday today! Happy birthday. That's right! That's right! And yeah. my, my baby is Karen. That's my cousin in marriage and just announced her pregnancy. So right. woo! Thank you, Jesus, for the God, for the blessing and the birth. She is about to be a mother, father, God, and it is her birthday today. So, <laughs> blessings. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Kendall, it's your birthday, baby, and we celebrate you big here at Sip and Shop. Ooh, we're going to take a sip for you right now. Mm-hmm. And also, shout out to her husband, Calvin, too. Calvin That's right. Doing some, doing some big things. In big the world. things. You all will know who they are. And yeah. I'm predicting as big as the Obamas. I'm putting that out there. Yeah, put it out there. That's right. I'm putting that out there because they're that fabulous and that dope. Right. Ew. Putting it out there. Right, Ed? Mm-hmm. Thank you for watching, Kendall, on your birthday. Very honored to have you, my baby. Next. Let's talk about Spike Lee for a, for a second. And this is not anything like, oh, Spike. I'm going to give him his lift up. His props in a different type of way. I think I just snapped my damn bra. Did I? War chow. War chow. Yes, it's it snapped. <laughs> the shoulder snapped. I felt a little. The shoulder snapped. Oh well. Um, let's talk about Spike Lee. This is another thing that hit me about maybe a week and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Most people don't talk about what Spike Lee has done for the entertainment industry, specifically various careers. And when I say that, what I mean is in front of the lens, besides definitely his casting director department, because they play a pivotal role in 
finding talent. But Spike Lee has to be the final say for each film, his leading uh, men, women um, that he's going to introduce to the audience, which he has broken a lot of careers, broken in the sense of open the gate for them to get in and platform in a different way for the audience to believe that this person is actually a leading male or a leading female. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, I think in that sense, he's been an unsung hero right. for decades. Name some people. Okay. Let's start first with Mr. Sp uh, Mr. Denzel Washington. Right. Denzel Washington was a part of Saint Elsewhere, which was a medical show he was on that as um, a part of the ensemble. And it was a really, really, um, in the end, the very last episode of St. Elsewhere showed the creativity of that show. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a multicultural cast, which was great because at that time they weren't really, you know, doing that. That was around the time that Law and Order, um, was it Law and Order? What was the show? No, wait, not Law and Order. Um, what is it? L.A. Law. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, not Law and Order. L.A. Law. Um, you know, they were all coming up around the same time. And mm -hmm. you know, it was still where you saw um, Caucasian males were always the lead. And then second lead would be Caucasian women. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be lucky if you had, like, um, anybody else thrown in there. So mm -hmm. one of the few black leads when his storylines would come up was Denzel Washington in St. Elsewhere. But here comes Spike Lee, mm -hmm. right? The groundbreaking, pioneering um, filmmaker that he still is, mm -hmm. but was for us back then. And he platformed Spike, um, Den I keep saying Spike Lee. Spike Lee platformed Denzel Washington in Mo Better Blues. As the leading man. As the leading man. And that's when everything broke open. Right. Because what we could see as um, as a culture, we already saw it, but it just needed to come forth for the universe to see it. And Spike Lee did that for Denzel and made him a leading man. Right. And then made him a leading man again in Malcolm, Malcolm X, X, which was a completely different role, autobiographical. Nominated. Right. should have won. Th thank you. He should have won. But he should have. He should have. But no one else would make him a lead. No. And so Spike Lee was pivotal in that. And he also then went many years, decades later, and not too long ago, platformed John David Washington, which is his son in Black Klansman, which opened up John David for film. Because he was already doing ballers. And he was great in ballers. Mm -hmm. But he was also really good. Right in Black Klansman. That was my first time actually even being aware of him as an actor. Go ahead. Well, not only that, I mm -hmm. mean, you got people, he broke a lot of talent too that we didn't know about. Rosie Rose, Perez. Rosie Perez, Rosario Dawson, Halle Berry. Oh, yeah, when Halle played the crack addict. Sam in, Jackson. Okay, hold on. Halle Berry played the in crack jungle, addict in Jungle Fever. In Jungle Fever, right. which was smart for, for you to take Halle, by the way. It right. was very smart. I think she probably made Strictly Business first, but I think Jungle Fever really put on the map as an actress. As a character actress. As a character actress. Right. She uglied up for that right. as best as, I mean, as she was still she a could. gorgeous. Then Sam Jackson. Yes. Then Sam Jackson, his first was Gator in Jungle right. Fever. Right. And that's what led to him getting Pulp Fiction. Right. Um, Again, Spike Lee. Right. Um, I mean, Spike Lee. Um, um, Rosie Perez. What Lawrence was Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne in school days. Like Spike Lee has has like when Platform. it comes to when it comes to black talent. Yes. Spike Lee has like broken black talent. Broken black talent. For real. You should be wearing a t shirt, Spike. Bro broken black talent. How about that? Brother, take it. Take it. Do it. Take it. Because you've done that. So we gotta raise our glass to Spike Lee for that. Yeah. And let's not even get into all the numerous talents behind the scenes that he's pulled on his films and right. and television shows that he's employed us, uh, Mar given us an the uh, Spanish dude Mars. The, uh, yes, from Hamilton. The Wanda Wise. I mean, mm -hmm. come on. 
for Spike. So many. Right. So many. I'm sorry, I don't know the brother's name. What's his name? I also want to say the Spanish dude. What's his name? I'm blanking out. Let me look right now. I got it. Let's give it, because then we just watched Treatment. Have you watched? Okay, this wasn't even on the list, but let's talk about it, babe, before we move to the next one. Have you been watching Treatment? In Treatment. In Treatment on In HBO Treatment Max. on HBO Max. So we saw the first season, but second season is being led. The therapist is Uzo. Uzo Adoba. From Orange is the New Black, Orange who was crazy Black. eyes, but now has cleaned up quite nicely. So it's important to say that that this is in treatment season four. Oh, it is? It's season four? Season four, because one, two, and three was played by, uh, I think, the uh, the English actor. I forget his name. But in season four... Oh, it's season four. Excuse me, season four. Yeah, in treatment season four on HBO Max, Uzo Adoba plays the lead uh, therapist. Mm-hmm. And it's basically about... Uh, these therapists that share, you know, that share a numerous amount of clients, and mm-hmm. each episode is a, a session with that client. Right. And it's deep. Anthony cool. Ramos, thank you, Joe. I was just about to say, yes, thank you, Joe. Anthony Ramos, another talented one. Oh my God, there were some levels we watched yesterday. We binged as much as we could. And um, so, Mr. Adobo, what? how do you say her last Mr. name? Mr. Adobo. Adobo cleaned up quite nicely for this role. And even if she, you know, did a reel of crazy eyes and some of this character, you would see the night and day in it. Completely different. No um, trace of crazy eyes at all. She is doing it. Anthony Ramos has a depth to him that is quite refreshing. And there was another young lady on there last night that was leading that thing. Quintessa Swindle. Honey! Quintessa! Swindle. And she was swindling her way through that therapy session. Yeah. Clean, honey. And also, um, we have um, a friend that I used to work with many years ago on shoots. Um, in New York, and she took a faith walk chance and went to L.A., and we mentioned her to you before. Her name is Tiffany Hasburn, and she was the um, costume designer for, when we saw it, Without Remorse, for um, that big movie with Michael B. Jordan. Mm -hmm. And last night, for In Treatment, Mm -hmm. season four, costume designer season four, because Miss Quintessa had on... The only high waisted. They look like Gucci. Like the the emblem was like Gucci. These fierce yellow. Oh, I love yellow. Eddie, you know I love yellow, right? Uh-huh. High waisted pants with this fuchsia pink to the skin top, like this, like this color, like in Sip and Shop. Mm-hmm. Sneakers on and like a varsity jacket. Shut up. And her beautiful curly hair. And that oh, that face, that skin, so gorgeous. Please tune in and and support. Please let those numbers go up because if you understand those algorithms, we got to get the numbers up for us, our talent. So that First week. To show that it's relevant and to show that they can right. pull the draw. That's what they right? like. They like the numbers up in the first week. In the first week, absolutely. So that was a good thing and that was an extra thing. But then guess what? Mm, okay. So last week, Eddie and I were on assignment in the M to the V, which is Martha's Vineyard. What a blessing. So we did the, um, the what was it, like kind of like a promo out there just to give you kind of like a hint where we were. And it was great. And I got a little sunburn. Disgusting. So I got that little heat rash thing on my chest. I was like, wow, I was super light before. Mm Mm-hmm. I was wearing my sunscreen, y'all, but I forgot to hit my chest and the back of my neck. Duh! Mm-hmm. So I got a little burn and tip of my nose, too. Mm-hmm. And I had on a mask walking around in Nueva York and still on the tip of my nose. I was like, child, this is shade to the boots with this sun. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so 
we had an opportunity that evening to take a break. And Eddie was like, well, what do you feel like doing? I was like, oh, whatever you want to do, babe. And he was like, do you feel like seeing a movie? I was like, oh, that's such a great idea. So we did go to the movies. There were five of us in the theater right. in Martha's Vineyard. Right. And Eddie treated me to see Duty Free. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you now. Not just if you are older in age and about to retire. I would suggest mm -hmm. that every single age, even if you're not working, mm -hmm. just to get an idea of what it is like to be beholden to a job, to your career, to a position, and then abruptly released mm -hmm. from it with no backup plan, no safety net. Duty Free had me bawling in the theater. I had my mask on and all of a sudden I was like reaching in my bag for a tissue and I could see Eddie's eyes looking over there and he reaches and he's holding my hand and I'm like this. <laughs> I thought I was going to walk out at least twice because I could, felt, I could feel like the heaving crying about to come on twice. It is heartbreaking, insightful, glorious, inspiring, captivating, mm -hmm. um, right. entertaining. It's, it's, it's a things. lot of things. So uh, Duty Free was uh, is directed by this guy named Sean uh, Pierre Regis. And I used to work with him at BET back in like 2008. And he went on to make a documentary about his mother's situation. His mother uh, raised him. Uh, him and his brother um, on a, a hotel uh, maid salary, pretty much. And they actually grew up in the hotel that uh, she worked in. And after she got to a certain age, the hotel released her. And she didn't have, I mean, you know, hotel people that work in hospitality, they don't make a lot of money. So she didn't have, like, savings like that. And she, right, we're not going to get right. everything I away. I want to get the whole document yeah, away, but it's yeah. about him... It, 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 this duty free is uh, a, a dedication to his mom and uh, and all the uh, men and women who are of that age who are let go with no savings. So it's 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 definitely a good documentary to watch, and it's it's playing in select theaters. So you have to you know Google it and you know do all that stuff and do your due diligence. But it's a, it's a, it's a dope watch. It's a dope watch, and not just that, but it's a lesson. It's inspiring and. I would also suggest that families see it together so they can have a discussion mm -hmm. after about it because there are just so many different aspects of it that are touched upon that's like... Right. We're not going to give it away, but we all want to tell you that... <clears throat> you know... I got to change positions. Oh, oh I'm sorry. It's, it's off the subject. Yeah. Giancarlo Esposito. Ah! Spike Lee. Back again to Spike, Spike Lee. Lee. Right. Bill, Bill Nunn. Come on. All right. I'm going to Building Spike Lee. We're going back again. Spike Lee. Let's get the, the cup. Sp mug. Spike Lee opened it up for Giancarlo Esposito. Bill Nunn. Rest in peace. Um, who's the sister that did, um, oh, brother, um, who was the first Nona Darling? Oh, Nola Darling? Oh, I forget. I don't know her name. Right. Uh, I have to look it up. But yes. Oh my gosh. He did so much. Um, Cinder Williams, when she yeah. was in... His sister opened up her, her acting career. Because if I remember correctly, um, Joie Lee teaches at NYU Drama Department. Right. Um, yeah. Spark! On to the next, on, on to the next, on to the next, on, on to the next. The beauty. Deets, do you think I look cute? <laughs> I'm feeling cute. Let me put this over here. What am I wearing today? Mm. I am giving you the softest version possible of this face chart right here. Mamacita! When you put this on, you feel like a mamacita, baby. I feel like I am doing it in the way by all. In Brooklyn, I could be in Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx. Right? I could do it all, honey. 
it's a special combination of gold and orange. This Mamacita is really a reflection of summer beauty, summer madness beauty, right? A uh, madness in the best way possible where we're seeing the sun, flowers, all of that, right? All in love. But today I wore it with this, our celebratory lipstick, 1997, which is an orange, ooh, so pretty, orange base red. Mmm, mmm. When I tell you this thing is super creamy, it heals. I always say bouncy and cushiony, bouncy and cushiony against my lips. It is fabulous. I love it. 1997 is the lip color that I decided to wear with Mamacita. Mamacita could have been fletching lipstick, which is a creamy sister color, but super, super shocking orange to 1997, which again is more of the red based, like tomato in a sense. Also, I paired it with Gold Rush eyeshadow, but just a slither, like I just kind of wet it a little bit just to open it up and slick it. But my face right now is the super softest way to wear it. And then finally, I just gave a shot of, if you can see like the gold flecks in the blush, which just gives like a nice little clean pop to my cheeks. I did a super soft contour in number seven, yeah, which is multifunctional because I did a little bit in my eyes in the crease. Mascara on the top, you know, I have my two pencils, taupe in the center part out, and then the arch is brunette in the original, both in the original brow pencils. And then of course, brow fix just to set. And then I set everything with two pumps of the mini spray and I'm good to go for the day because it will last all day long. Um, so again, you can go to fairwithafaces.com. You go to Andrea's Seasonal Picks on the homepage. You go down and you'll see all of that listed. Your 1997, your Mamacita, and also I created this look today with the mini set. And the one that I was heavy with was really the brush and the lip. I didn't really honestly have to use this one so much for the eyes I could, because I just quickly used everything else. So for my cheeks, contour, for spot treatment on my face, right, concealer all around, and then my powder all around with this then come back you clean it off and then I just did like you know a little flick up with the brows clean it off again I used my finger a little bit just to put in the gold rush I went over it just smoothed it out with the brush clean it off you do contour pop on the cheek and then lips with the brush to get into the nooks and crannies so it's really clean right so your mini set is up there as well and then just to let you know, this is your final chance when you go to Andrea's Seasonal Picks on the front page of fairwithafaces.com. This is your last chance to get the lip bundle, y'all. And I'm telling you, it's almost sold out. It's not all the way sold out. It's almost sold out because some of you want to be ready for summer. And you will be because only those that order will get the special lip combination that I created for Charlie Wright right joseph's bello magazine cover look fierce and it's a gorgeous gorgeous pink that i created right then and there on the spot and once i did and i saw it on her i knew that i had to bring it to my sip and shop audience and so anyone that orders it will get that lip combination it's a secret formula and how about this i'm also throwing in other lip combinations Ooh! But only if you get it. And this is going to be a last chance because come Monday, it's going to be done. Right. I can promise you by Monday, we'll be done and it'll be off the site. So get it, right? Get it. Let's talk about um, the online lessons. Some of you are really doing it. So we're visiting homes again, right? Doing makeup lessons, 
I am, my team is, which is really nice, mm -hmm. but so many Zoom lessons, which is really, really cool, and you all are realizing the value of it. Right. Need to let you in on something else. We also have gift cards. I'm sure you're aware of it. It's like a gold and black card. That's the Fairweather Faces gift card. And a lot of you are ordering for graduates, mm -hmm. giving them, and one, when asked, because you have to email fairweatherfaces at gmail.com to get it, right? Because we want to um, just guide you through on how to use it and get the best out of it. Some of you are, are either ordering kits on your own, like you're putting together like these kit colors. Oh, I want like the mini set with this face chart, couple of face charts, and this lipstick, this blush, this liner, that kind of thing. We put it together and ship it to the graduate. Others are saying, you know what? I want her to have a Zoom lesson with you or one of your team. Fabulous. So when it comes time for their job interviews, they're ready to go. Great. So smart and such a memorable gift to bless a graduate with. So those are just some of the things that you can do. But last week, what we did do was we had a bridal beauty event online and it was quick. It was a half hour of jam packed information given by me to share with you all of the things that I felt were really important for the brides to consider when creating their wedding day looks. And it was awesome. And I will do it again because it's already in popular demand. I haven't chosen the date yet, but it is coming soon. So that's another thing. So, right? And for that price point that I gave for the group, and it, it didn't, oh, it was almost sold out. It was only right. like maybe, I'll say not even five, like three to five slots. It was, that, that was like one of the biggest, right. you know. Right. In attendance thus far um so that was great and I thank you for that so check this out so I want you to get accustomed to going to fairweatherfaces.com and again on the home page when you start to look look for Andrea's seasonal picks that's such a big section the reason why is because each week it's updated with I'm just moving through thinking about you of what looks I would like for you to explore what I think that you need to be aware of in terms of essentials for your makeup kit, and also the experience of the week. What online event can you attend that um, can possibly elevate your makeup career, help guide you in terms of building out your business, and also help you as a bride? Not just that, but if you are a person that just needs to elevate their own makeup look, what is there for you? And there's so many options. So when you go to Andrea's Seasonal Picks, again, remember I change it out each week. That's your home base that I want you to become accustomed to just checking in at least once or twice a week and just see what's different about it and what's on the forefront where I think it's a way to um, just be your beauty guru guide. How about that? Mm -hmm. Your beauty guru guide of how you need to hit these streets and hit those zooms. So right after Sip and Shop Today airs, we're going to have a quick little couple of seconds of a little beauty video just to you know get you in the moment of what Andrea's seasonal picks have to offer. Mm -hmm. And so we hope you look at that. And with that, I Please don't hit me in the head. Okay, you went. Ooh! Ed, look where it landed. That's crazy. Right on the table. Ta da! Honorable mention. Bye. Makai Pfeiffer. Delroy Lindo. Yeah! Isaiah Washington. Back again with the cup. Teresa Randall. Okay, but okay, you go in there. You go in there. You go in there. That's right. For Spike Lee, once again, Makai Pfeiffer, Clockers, yep. Delroy, Delroy Lindo, Lindo Clockers. Clockers, Isaiah Washington, Clockers Girl 6, Crooklyn. Clockers Girl 6, Crooklyn, Crook, yeah, 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 Crooklyn, Crooklyn, Crooklyn first, Alls, yep. uh, Teresa Randall, Malcolm X, Girl 6, right, and oh, Clockers. Lisa Arendelle, excuse me, Lisa, Lisa Arendelle, Arendelle, Clockers, Damn. you know I went to school with Lisa Arendelle, right? The reason, did I ever tell you guys, the reason that I knew to train at Alvin Ailey to get in, okay, I had a desire late 
to study dance. 12. It's late. After seeing the movie Fame, I went to a birthday party for my friend that lived in my neighborhood in East Flatbush, Lisa Payton. She had a birthday party. I went. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling someone, anyone that would listen, that I wanted, I got the vision that I wanted to become a dancer and I wanted to start studying and I needed to a place. Lisa overheard the conversation, came to me and said, sis, if you really want to dance and you really want to get into performing arts, you need to go to Alvin Ailey. And I was like, what's Alvin Ailey? She said, you never heard of the choreographer Alvin Ailey? And I said, no, I haven't. So she sat me, gave me the history lesson on Alvin Ailey and actually said, come next Saturday, they're going to audition at the school, which was in the Minskoff Theater in Times Square, which was gorgeous the studios because it had the, we could look out onto broadway and it had floor to ceiling um windows and you could look out and it was pristine and it was majestic to me and anyway um lisa arendale was the reason why i studied at early to be right. able to train for one year to get into performing arts so thank you my sister right right spike lee and all those talented folks that made us proud Mm -hmm. Make us proud. Yeah. Mm. So on that note, let's do our final toast. Sip and shop. This is also the countdown. The countdown to summer. Eddie and I are going to sign off early with you all because we want to have a summer. Right. That's right. So we're we're gonna count down um, now. <laughs> it's gonna start. We're counting down now and we're coming back to you again. And then, you know, we will kiss off from there. But in the meantime and in between time, thank you so much for watching Sip and Shop Season 2, Episode 9. We had a ball on this hazy, rainy, some, it's not even summer yet, spring day, yeah. spring Saturday. But you know what? The sun was in my heart because you were here with us. So thank you again. If you want to get your mug, go to fairweatherfaces.com. Go get your In Beauty and Peace mug. Thank you so much. We're wishing health and happiness and healing to you all. And salute. Salute. Well, the first time I drank out everything. She's an actress. I had one last sip. She's an actress. Because... Sip and Shop Season 2, Episode 9 is done! Go get your 1997 lipstick and your mama seat the face chart and your gold rush eyeshadow and your big old blush and uh, your mascara and your uh, brow fix and your uh, contour as I swirl. <laughs> He's like... Keep swirling, girl. Keep swirling. I will. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget, look for the video coming up in a second. Coming up to you. Bye. I'm looking to hit this thing and end it. And there it is.